Namaskar to this uh, episode of the India Foundation Con Conversation. We have with us a very special guest today, Dr. G. Satish Reddy. Dr. Reddy is the president of the Aeronautical Society of India, former secretary, Department of Defense uh, Research and Development, and former chairman DRDO and scientific advisor to Raksha Mantri, Government of India. Uh, Dr. Reddy, sir, it is a privilege and honor to have you with us today. Thank you. Very nice meeting you. Thank you, sir, for your time. So, without wasting a minute, let me get to my first question. India has some path-breaking successes in the space <laughs> program. How do you think is India's space program progressing today? Uh, India has done exceedingly well in the space. Uh, we all should compliment the Department of uh, Space, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, for this fantastic feat. We have developed our own launch vehicles, whether it is a PSLV, the Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, or the geostationary launch vehicle for launching the satellites into 36,000 kilometers orbit, and the variants of it, and becoming completely self-reliant in that area by developing our own cryogenic engines, building varieties of payloads and satellites, and then taking up many missions, which are uh, like Mangalyaan, Chandrayaan, and other things. India stands very tall, among the developed nations in the space area. Particularly, if you look at, India is one of the countries which has got its own satellite-based navigation system, like GPS, GLONASS, and other things. We have our own IRNSS, Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System. So very few countries have this. So ISRO has exceedingly done well in the area of space activities, including the uh, various base stations and ground stations, what are required for communications and all that, and providing lots of communication, lots of data, whether weather data or agriculture related, education, many things, and leaving aside the imagery and other things. Uh, so that's absolutely fantastic to hear. You mentioned uh, the Mangalayan and the Chandrayan uh, programs, you know, both of them, Mangala and Chandra and three were very, very successful. What are the future programs which are of importance as far as space exploration is concerned? Firstly, we are uh, uh, one of the few countries who have done the Mangalyan and also Chandrayaan. And a uh, lot of data has been generated in the Chandrayaan and we landed on the South Pole. We again should congratulate ISRO for this fantastic feat what they have done and the data what is being collected. As we hear uh, from the Department of Space and the ISRO chairman, uh, Mr. Somnath, the next Chandrayaan will be to collect some certain samples from the moon and bring it back to the Earth and then analyze them. Today we are analyzing then and there and data is being sent. This is one thing. Second, Gaganyaan Sending a human being into space is another important activity which ISRO is uh, taken up and probably in the next two years, this activity also should be successfully completed. And thirdly, lots of uh, space exploration activities are being taken up. Today, you know, the mission Aditya has been taken up to observe the sun going very close to not very, uh, it's as far as for possible going there and putting the satellite and putting various probes and observing the cosmic rays, the temperatures, various aspects of the sun. Like that, many activities are planned by the ISRO and nation should be proud of ISRO. Absolutely, sir. I think the nation is very proud of ISRO. But sir, we've also been hearing a lot of these terms and these words like space war. You know, what exactly is space war and what are the different technologies used in this domain? Firstly, the space has become the fourth dimension of warfare. Uh, space has been used for the defense purposes by the multiple nations now. One of the first thing is observing the various activities various sensors on ground from the space. Uh, whether look at the troops movement, 
look at the various arms and equipment movement, look at the various positions of the radars, and look at the various positions of the missiles is one of the important activities which the uh, world has taken up, most advanced world, the nations have done. If you look at some of the wars which have taken place recently, satellites have been launched, our satellites are already in the space, and they keep observing everything, and data is completely generated. That's what has happened in the Iraq war. You know everything where the radar is there, where the troop movement is there, where the tanks, where the vehicles moving and all. And then you start the offensive activity. Second, there are uh, actions which are being taken up to look at whether in the space you are trying to do some activities which can counter these observations by the enemy satellites. This is one more activity some other nations which have taken up. And so lots of payloads which are required for this called aligned, common signal intelligence and image intelligence and related things. Lots of payloads are being developed and developed by the various nations. So uh, you said that there are a lot of applications in the defense domain, you know. Uh, how is it affecting our defense preparedness? As I said, firstly, the satellites provide the surveillance and intelligence information. So whatever the resources you have, right from the troops to the various sensors and various weapons and things like that, will be known to the enemy if they have placed the satellite and it's continuously observing mm -hmm. through images or through other uh, uh, payloads, like what I said, electronic intelligence, uh, signal intelligence, or communication intelligence, or uh, image intelligence, whatever you say. So you can have, you probably can track the communication, you probably can track where the radars are, you can track various sensors, various weapons are there, is one of the important things which any nation gets affected. And so, also, some of the nations, as I just mentioned, are looking at how to counter these satellites. So, there's how AS, ASAT missions have come, anti-satellite tests. Uh, some of them are putting lasers, and some of them trying to put other electromagnetic things, and trying to have some robotic-related activities in the space. And so, these are some of the activities which are happening, which actually concern any nation, because your information is known to the enemy. Correct. Uh, sir, you mentioned these uh, weapons against satellites, you know, and uh, as you said, India has also carried out some anti-satellite missions. Uh, is the space then becoming a war zone? And what do you think is the stand of India? See, firstly, uh, there are three countries other than India which have done the anti-satellite missions. Russia, America and China. India became the fourth nation to have demonstrated this capability. As far as uh, the space is concerned, as I said, as you are able to observe the entire movement and locations of it, it's a concern for uh, any nation that its information is known to them. So that's how the anti-satellite missions have come. But then, this is a concern that the space is getting towards weaponized and it is not good for the world. So India has been saying that the space should be used for the peaceful purposes. But then Honorable Prime Minister was very clear that the mission what India has taken up, anti-satellite mission Shakti, is only a technological demonstration. We wanted to show it to the world that India has such capabilities to take up such complex and critical missions. So, India is very clear that the space should be used for the peaceful purposes and we should not be weaponized. Uh, so, you mentioned the anti-satellite tests uh, that were planned, like Mission Shakti. Uh, are there any further programs to take this forward? Um, many countries are working in these areas. Uh, also, could you tell us a little bit about what are the various types of offensive anti-satellite technologies? Okay, good. Firstly, uh, as far as India is concerned, the Anbal Prime Minister, when he gave the direction, 
he said that let us take up this mission and demonstrate to the world that india has such a technological capabilities and show it to the world so and so it has been demonstrated and shown to the world that we have such capabilities and india has become the fourth nation after russia america and china india as well now the meaning of it is that as far as um, the decision that day is concerned let us only do a technological demonstration and let us not take it further as of today uh, i the extent information what i have um, no further activity is taken up in the anti satellite uh, activities is concerned but then if you look at technologically there are multiple technologies which are developed for anti satellite one is a missile which you go and hit the satellite is one activity second thing is you have high power lasers which can you neutralize the satellite you can have high power electromagnetics which can again neutralize which can be a satellite based or ground based or airborne developing based on the type of power what you are developing there are this type of a payloads people are attempting to put it on the satellite itself and try to have a kill against the satellite there are something called co orbit satellites meaning you also travel close to it and then attack the other satellite they have a robotic arm and things like that and all that and dock the satellite towards what you want to do it so these are multiple technologies and the world is talking about probably somebody is working somebody is only doing a research somebody is thinking of and things like that but technologically these are the technologies which are being worked out for the anti satellite missions sir uh, out of uh, personal interest what countries do you think are uh, very advanced in this sort of offensive anti satellite technologies very clear it is one thing is russia china usa uh, these are the known ones which are actually publicly uh, information available but there are other nations definitely attempting it probably some other nations in the europe and then um, maybe in the uh, other countries probably attempting it but unless there is a test no done we will not be very clear about what exactly is the uh, way they are going uh, sir are there any sort of uh, uh, laws that govern uh, uh, space there are uh, space laws which are coming to picture in fact in our own indian universities of so the space laws are introduced in some of the law universities but then we have to see how much the treaties are there where uh, the world is aware into the treaties and people are accepting to those treaties is what to be seen correct sir so uh, uh, let me also bring your attention to india's at mission uh, that's created a lot you know people have said that it's created a lot of debris in space uh, people have expressed concern apprehensions uh, on the test is is this concern legitimate see firstly when india has done this test there have been a very clear direction from the honorable prime minister that try to see that the debris are minimum so the test has been planned the collision has been planned in such a way the debris are minimum and also it has been carried out at a lower orbit at about 300 kilometers so that the debris debris decay very fast hmm. so when the debris were created in the impact there were around estimated about 400 debris or so by the various sensors across the globe and the way we have done at a lower orbit and the way impact has been done the collision angle has been done the debris decayed very fast today the website like um, uh, selitrack and others they don't show any debris at all from the isat so mm. india has behaved as a very responsible nation still having a test done as a isat test to show it to the world that the technological capability exists and then ensure that the debate the debris of decade very fast which are minimal in them. so that's wonderful to use that it's been a complete holistic sort of project but how is the world going to finally handle any sort of space debris uh, what are there any actions that are already in the pipeline to manage space debris and also could you clarify Uh, to our viewers what are the dangers of space debris 
assist the space debris is a very serious concern. The, all the nations are looking into this issue very seriously, individually and even collectively. The estimated space debris today of the size of about more than 10 centimeters is about 25,000 debris in the space. Now, when these debris are there, for all the missions, whether the satellites or the space stations are in danger. Any debris um, colliding with any of these objects, that object is gone. Generally. So there is a danger. And also for some of the launch activities, if you are going through or even the interplanetary motions, any debris can cause uh, an issue to this vehicle or a satellite is the serious concern. So the world is looking at it very seriously. How to actually come out of this issue of the debris? Uh, there are multiple things which have been thought about. One is take up the missions in such a way that debris will be minimum out of these uh, launches and satellites. We are trying to put it in the orbit. They create minimum debris. This is number one. Number two, also try to collect these debris through various mechanisms and then remove them from the space. Some of the activities, like even people thought about net, if you see some uh, debris coming, try to create. Also, there are uh, activities like trying to have high power lasers and all that. Try to uh, see that the debris are brought into small, small pieces. And then um, the small pieces are um, of little concern. Uh, the concern is not as serious as if you have a 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters are bigger objects which you have. So these are all various technologies which are being taught, both from the space itself or from the ground or from the airborne, how to actually eliminate or destroy or remove these uh, debris is a serious concern. And the entire globe, all the nations have to sit together, work collectively on these technologies and try to, as a world, as one nation, Try to eliminate these debris is an important activity what needs to be taken up. Sure, sir. You know, uh, clearly this sort of debris would affect everybody equally. But has there been any sort of, uh, uh, you know, common legal sort of uh, uh, rules, regulations made uh, amongst the nations on this? Is there any consensus? Yeah, there have been a number of discussions and um, various nations have been sitting together. There have been very um, conferences. Recently also there was a conference in Bangalore and people are trying to work out. But there have been general guidelines which have been brought in that uh, whatever space activities we take up, we try to see that minimum debris are generated out of it. There is one guideline. Uh, and still the nations are working on that, how to work on this and how to mitigate the debris. As I said, the technologies which need to be developed and nations which have to take up the activity to mitigate this Plans are being worked out and various nations are sitting together to come out with an action plan. Excellent to hear, sir. Sir, uh, you know, as we come to the final part of this uh, discussion, uh, can you explain to us how does the Department of Space and the Department of Defense cooperate with each other? See, one thing is these two are um, two separate departments, but both are scientific organizations technology development organizations. So likewise, there is Atomic Energy and Department of uh, uh, Science and Technology or CSIR are also there, where a lot of science and technology developments happen and we all cooperate with each other. All these departments cooperate with each other in various developmental activities, research activities, and even technology development activities. And particularly ISRO and uh, DRDO, have some uh, common technologies like uh, uh, ISRO does launch vehicles, DRO does missiles, mm -hmm. and some of the payloads, the technologies, what are there in that uh, missile, your navigation system, your control systems, and related things, they're common. So, technologically, um, some dialogues, discussions, and cooperations do happen between the two departments. We are one nation. The entire scientific capability, what is there in this nation, right from academic institutes to various research organizations and industry, 
have to synergetically work towards the science and technology development in the country and make the nation as a science and technology, advanced science and technology hub. That's the goal. So all the departments cooperate on science and technology. So that's absolutely very promising to hear that there is this sort of deep cooperation. But let me ask you my final question. In 2024, what can we expect to see from Israel? I think I'm not the right person to answer, but I think uh, some activity towards the Gaganyan should take place. That's what I hear from the sources. And uh, a lot should happen. The country should become uh, more and more Atmanirbha. The country has become Atmanirbha in a big way in all the activities of space or defense or other activities. A lot of indigenous activities, uh, systems are being developed, technologies being developed. And it is very, very uh, happy to note that lots of youngsters have joined into this frame. Lots of startups have come. They're working on the very advanced technologies and innovations. The type of innovations which are coming up from the youngsters and startups is uh, fantastic. And I'm sure 24 will be a great year with lots of innovations and lots of science and technology achievements. Looking forward to 2024, sir, and uh, seeing more of this uh, new space age technology and cooperation take place. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. It was really an honor to have you here. It's been a learning experience. Namaskar. Thank you very much. All the best to you and a happy new year to you and entire your team.